exporting. If you want to export the whole sequence, you're cool. If not, you can select an area like this. After that, Control M. And you can fiddle around with the exporting area a bit more in here. Select the codec that you want, select the preset that you want. We'll talk a bit about the cost and presets later. For now, just take the one that fits your bill. Then you can choose the location to save your video file and name it in here. Then you should watch out for the source settings of your sequence slash clip and compare them to your output settings to get the best results. And now I'll be talking about how to get the best quality encoding time and video file size that you can get. So pay attention. First, explaining what these things are under the video tab. You can get a little bit info about them by putting your mouse on top of them and reading the yellow box. But in some cases, it really doesn't tell you what it is or when it does, it can be a bit technical gibberish. So I'll tell you what I know. This is the resolution. That is the size of the screen of the video. Recommend matching with the source settings. Then frame rate, one frame is like one picture and this is how many frames do you have in a second. Recommend to match with source settings. Then field order, small explaining. Back in the day, NTSC, PAL and some HD formats started to use a recording system called lower field and that first recorded the even numbered lines, then a fraction second later, uneven numbered lines. Then some HD forms start to use upper field, and that does the same thing, but first uneven numbered lines, then even numbered lines. And then came progressive that records all the lines at the same time. Nowadays, most equipment use progressive, but my recommendation is that match with the source, and if that looks a bit funky, then go with progressive. Aspect. Let's just say that this is a headache from yesteryears and always have the square pixels. TV standard. Small explaining number two. NTSC and PAL are TV broadcasting standards for different parts of the world. Today's HD age, I think this only means frame rate. And in my knowledge, NTSC is 29.97 and PAL is 25, but I really don't know. My video camera gives NTSC a 30. And in here, so I have no clue. So my recommendation is to go with the source settings and if it goes to somewhere like the TV, make sure that they give you the right frame rate. Profile. This is a bit weird and a small explain number three. When you put a preset for phone and tablet, it gives baseline from here. When you put a regular HD video or regular video, it gives a main. And when you put a YouTube or a Vimeo video, it gives high. And my guess is that these are bit different encoding systems that work best in their target platforms. So just put the preset that's closest to your desire and go with the profile that it gives. Then level. This is an annoying gatekeeper that doesn't let you put your resolution or frame rate higher unless you put it higher. Like, can't do it, you have to put this higher and then you can bit do it. Render at maximum depth slash use maximum render quality and these explain in these pretty well and they basically means 
we make your effect look better, but we will take a bit more of your encoding time. Use previews. When you hit enter on your timeline sequence and it makes the red parts green, you can use those green part files to make your exporting faster. Use frame blending and it says it pretty good there. And it means that if you have a different exporting frame rate from the source frame rate, you want to use this. And import in the project does what it says that when you have exported it, the file goes straight to this project where you exported it. And lastly from here, bitrate. And bitrate basically translates to detail in pixel slash file size of video. And I'll show you the detail part. And for me, it's a bit funny that basically I could see the difference from this file to here, but from this file to this file, I couldn't see very big of a difference. So I want to you to keep that in mind when you're um, exporting your videos and putting the bitrate. Like if you can't see the difference, what's the point? This could also mean that I don't have a good enough computer screen and stuff like that. Then the bitrate settings you can choose from three different encoding modes. Constant bitrate that will lock on to the one bitrate and do it in that. Variable bitrate that will do it in the target bitrate but it can go a bit over because it analyzes the material and then tailors the bitrate according to that analytics. And in the one pass, it does them all on the fly. And in two passes, the first pass is the analyzing and the second pass is the encoding. And in my opinion, the double pass takes the double the time of exporting. So I'll go with the one pass because I think they look quite similar. And from the rest in here, the one other thing that you might touch from these are the audio. And by the way, info, when you choose a different format, you get a bit different kind of settings in here. And you can even get like these kind of things if you have the right kind of settings. Then, after testing and trying out the settings, I've concluded that the main factors are in file size, bitrate settings, this was the only thing that really affected the file size, in encoding times, the variable bitrate to pass, and the render at maximum depth, and this only affected if you had red spots in your sequence. Then in the quality, all effect quality. So just choose the right format and preset for the job, then match with the source settings, then select right bitrate that's close to comfort, and then check the boxes that you see were checking, and then I think you're all set. And then you want to save that as a preset. So you don't ever, ever, ever have to do that thing again for that kind of project. And then I think you're ready to start exporting in the smartest way possible. Here. And this will send it to Media Encoder CC, which is a separate program from Premiere. And I think it's great for two reasons. One, you can start encoding, exporting and go back to the Premiere and continue editing. It will be a bit slower, but it will work. 
and two you can go to different projects and different sequences and put them to the, the media encoder exporting list and you can like export them all overnight with the single push of a button but sometimes this program fails to work and then the smartest thing to do is to press export but before you press that there's one itsy bitsy thing that you should do and that's multiple different screenings on this mode and I can't stretch this enough you really should do screening once after sleep once with censoring in mind background music and sensitive info in video once with friends and family they can give great feedback once with audio levels in mind and once after exporting you can find some surprise errors in there and if you have a massive project I recommend taking a couple of days off after it's done and then coming back and watching it and I think you can see pretty clearly what's awful about it and what's not now ladies and gentlemen this is the end has come and is here thank you for watching hope this video gave you some new spice to your editing life and maybe some techniques for future battles and later